Hi. So in this video, we'll look into an example of inverted pendulum and we'll consider control using the re reinforcement learning. In this case, we will consider that uh, there is no control uh, framework being set as in we don't know what kind of control we are going to put up um, as in there's no structure uh, like PID exists here. So here we will set up an objective of developing a model fee reinforcement learning agent capable of stabilizing a nonlinear pendulum in a simulated environment. Let's understand what this particular statement talks about. Let's first see what is the inverted pendulum we are talking about. The inverted pendulum, the pendulum is pivoted somewhere at top and this in this particular pendulum should, should be, um, should get stabilized to its vertically upright condition direction. So the force that is being applied is at this particular pivot place which is the tau that is being, that is shown here and it comes into this particular vertical upright position. We know that this particular equilibrium state uh, if I perturb very little because of the environment dis disturbances or anything that very small changes then this pendulum will come back to its, its stable equilibrium which is the downward direction itself. So we would like to consider this exercise is a, as a model free uh, methodology. Of course, we the, the physics of the inverted pendulum has been studied um, uh, a lot and even in fact we can write uh, the physics equation governing these different equations as ml square theta double dot plus mgl sin theta plus b theta dot. Uh, no, sorry, sin theta, sin theta, okay, uh, re redo it. Okay, so the governing equations are ML square theta double dot plus MGL sin theta plus B theta dot equals tau, right? which we can write it in the form of the pendulum dynamics in terms of the state space representation where we will consider the two states as x1 equals theta and x2 dot equals x2 equals theta dot which is the angular velocity of the this particular angle that that is shown over here remember in the previous example in other other videos we we showed this theta as the uh, the angle between the vertical upright position uh, which the pendulum arm makes. Whereas here we are showing it with respect to the vertically down axis over here and there is a reason behind it, we will talk about that. All right. So now when we are considering um, this exercise of creating a simulated environment, in this case um, since we want to consider um, uh, making a training data out of it, we will consider that this particular governing equation is sitting into the simulated environment. And this uh, and, and of course this particular environment is having some kind of disturbances, some noises acting on theta, some noises acting on tau is going to be um, going to be present there. Theta noises on theta and theta dot because finally when I am controlling this particular uh, system um, which has the states theta and theta dot. So theta and theta dot are the system, um, This, if this is my system, the states are theta and theta dot, input is tau and there is an output which is again I am considering theta as the output. And my objective in this situation because my theta representation is with respect to the vertically down, my objective is to make theta equal to pi which is which is my the reference position uh, here angular position over here all right so now when i'm considering this as a system the um, the rl agent has an environment and in that environment these governing equations are being coded and i am considering the noise on tau, tau and noise on theta it is because will be theta and theta dot because the measurements are on theta and theta dot. 
So these, when, whenever there is a measurement somewhere in the actual environment, when there is an actual inverted pendulum, somebody is recording this theta and theta dot, whether it is a visual way of, visual, um, uh, way of measurement or it is, um, uh, or it is encoder based uh, measurements and what not, okay, or IMU based, uh, based uh, measurements here. Each and every measurement will be corrupted with noise and those noises have to be understood acting as disturbance, um, uh, act, acting as noises into the system. This disturbance can also be because of the environmental wind conditions or any other forces acting on the invert, in, inverted pendulum here, uh, any other means uh, forces other than gravity. Okay. So, this particular simulation environment, simulated environment is taking care of giving me the data where I have, uh, I, I will be able to add noise and disturbances to the system and of course, I am not making any disturbance model or a sensor or a noise model over here, alright. Uh, the data will be collected based on the observation that I am creating and the action that I am, because for the RL agent, what is the input? input is action, output is observation, all right, that is something we will have to code. So, for the simulated environment, the codes will be provided and which considers these parameters, nine, uh, the, the gravity parameter, the length of the arm, the damping coefficient and the mass of the system, all right, which you would be able to change it. Let us see when we formulate this problem as an RL agent problem, the when we want to solve this problem as a re reinforcement learning problem, what all things we need is we need certain um, way by which this particular simulated environment is getting actions and the observations being collected from the environment. So we have the control challenge over here, we do not have the model. The RL agent does not know the model of the system. So, this physics is only to create the simulated environment. The agent must learn to generate effective control commands, alright. So, these are the actions being given. The actions to the environment may or may not be, be exactly same as the input to the given, right. Input to the process or the system is in our system is just tau over here, alright. So, that is something we have to be, uh, be clear on the action to the simulated environment and input control input to the system. These are two different things we are talking about. But the action space may or may not come take the directly what the control input is. And then our challenge is to maintain this particular pendulum in an upright direction, stable position where we do not know the, uh, do not have the prior knowledge of the dynamics. We, so, be clear on it, prior knowledge of the dynamics is available to the environment, not to the RL agent. Now, we are focusing on developing this particular RL agent. At the same time, we can pose certain requirements for the control objective to be achieved and over here we will, we can consider that the control input is between minus 20 and 20. The system should be robust in initial conditions. As in, from wherever my, my initial position of theta, of theta is, right, could be 10 degrees, could be 30 degrees, 90 degree, I can start, I can hold this particular theta and from there I am giving, uh, the forces are given. So, the initial condition could be anything, not necessary only theta equal to 0, which will make the pendulum swing to and maintain a stationary upright position, all right. So, this with given this particular requirement, since this is learning based method, we should be making sure that it is in initial condition independent. It means the simulated environment should take care of generating the data from various different initial conditions, so that I am the RL agent is capable of learning it. For the simulation environment, as we spoke about, it incorporates system dynamics with additive noise and simulating real world unpredictabilities. For example, there are certain forces acting onto the system which are shown as disturbances, could be a wind coming in, there is a fan running around or, or uh, many different ways by which the forces are. We have to be considering a realistic environment so that we are not making sure that 
uh, it is a very large wind and we are making an ambitious attempt to make the inverted pendulum into the vertical direction. So, certain realistic disturbances uh, which we can say that okay, uh, we are able to add them or there are sensor measurements theta and theta dot and we are making certain additive noise, adding some additive noise to it. Uh, so that when we are doing it in the actual environment and there are certain measurements appearing there, we are able to take care of those uh, because the agent has already learned to, uh, to handle those noises, noise levels and the disturbance levels. Now comes the design of the uh, RL agent. For designing the RL agent, we have to first consider what are the observations and actions taken or, or given to the environment. So, here we will consider the observation space as just not theta and theta dot, but we will consider theta as theta being given as x y position which is cos theta and sin theta. The, the thing is the, the important point over here is that we have to consider these theta these observation variables within certain range and it is always a good idea to consider some normalized range like given here. So, this normalization is something that we would like to do all right. So, in my previous video you have seen that my theta representation was with respect to the vertical axis this was theta. So, for if I am considering this as theta representation then my control objective is to make theta equal to 0 and my theta can remain say between minus pi by 2 to plus pi by 2. I am just trying to, um, to make this situation um, a little, const little, um, uh, little constrained that my theta remains between minus pi by 2 to plus pi by 2 and let us say it does not go down as a hypothetical case. To understand what we say, wh how do we convert this range into uh, the normalized range. So, then if, I'm, if my theta is between minus pi by 2 2 pi by 2 and there is a 0 coming in here. So, this is what is my um, uh, stable position that is what we want and this stable position should reflect within the range minus 1 to plus 1 with this 0 mapping to 0. So, this map that we are creating between minus pi by 2 2 plus pi by 2 within the range minus 1 to plus 1 can then be done in a very uh, methodological way by saying that ok. Now, since the range is between z, uh, minus pi by 2 to plus pi by 2 the entire range is of pi then let us shift this to minus pi by 2 plus pi 0 everywhere we will add this plus pi. So, 0 plus pi and this becomes plus pi by 2 2 plus pi which makes it this as pi by 2 plus pi by 2 this as pi and this as 3 pi by 2. So, as soon as we do that what we have now is the theta representation given by this position. So, this becomes my theta equal to pi position this is theta equal to 0 pi by 2 and 3 pi by 2. And that is the reason we considered theta as the vertically down position, uh, uh, theta with respect to the vertically down position. So, now my mapping is from minus 1 to plus 1 by dividing the angle with respect to. So, if, if my we, we started with uh, transforming this theta to this theta representation to this vertically down this thing. Um, of course, this theta is right now we are saying this as pi by 2. Now, we I have swapped this as well. So, this becomes pi by 2 and this becomes 3 pi by 2. I can consider that as well as I can consider uh, because my uh, our convention is always anti clockwise direction conventions. So, we, we will we can even we, we would like to make sure that this is also swapped. So, what is important here is a representation of the state variable. Again, now I am ta not talking about the system state, I am talking about environment state. So, this state representation when we speak about here 
instead of theta I am again making cos theta and sin theta representation because um, when we play around with angles, angles are always notorious as we have said as we could see here in this particular um, example as well. The proper theta representation where we have the anti-clockwise and clockwise representation being, being clearly taken care uh, needs to be uh, very robust. And as soon as I convert this into the Cartesian coordinate vector or, or a vector form, this becomes easy that I can as soon as I say theta is this particular angle and I have this plus and minus signs for x and y given, I can understand which particular uh, Cartesian uh, plane I am in, uh, uh, which particular Cartesian quadrant I am at and would be able to make the maneuvers or the computations very clearly done here. Um, uh, that is one reason that we converted this into the observation space variables in terms of x and y. Uh, so in nutshell when you are dealing with angles, you have to make sure that this angle representation is correct. At the same time angle representation is in each quadrant is reflecting correctly when you are doing the manipulations or computations um, in terms of the even in the environment phase or in the RL agent case. All right. So making computational easies as well as making sure that uh, your signs are not making any difference it is a good idea to convert into x and y representation. The third variable is angular velocity theta dot which is again made sure that it is normalized. So it is between minus and plus one, minus 1 to plus 1. So it is divided by maximum value of theta dot. The action space same way we the action space is just torque in this case which so this tau is normalized to minus 1 by 2 plus 1 by dividing it by maximum of tau. Now comes the reward design. The reward, de reward design is now if we see this particular uh, this particular term which is theta upon pi minus 1. Again what we are making sure that if theta is um, away from its equilibrium position or the stable position that or the desired position in our case theta equal to pi is our desired position. So this becomes theta upon pi which is 1, 1 minus 1 which is equal to 0. So this particular negative sign is making sure that if I am going away from theta then it is a penalizing effect. So reward is all negative terms you could see. What is my desired is giving me 0 value. But if I am as soon as I am going away from 0, this is penalizing it by making a negative sign over here, right. So this becomes a penalty on, on a particular action being taken. Similarly, the second term, so this before moving to the second term, we could see that writing it in the theta equal to pi case, this way of representing also made a um, easier way of doing it. If theta equal to 0 would have been a control objective in our previous, uh, previous objective, then we had to divide theta with 0, which is uh, not a correct way of doing it. There are other ways to represent if theta, if the control objective is uh, to make a particular variable to go to origin. But in this case, anyway, theta equal to pi, so we could make this kind of uh, penalty position, penalty, penalty calculations being done in the reward function. The second term now, the CK second term is penalizing for giving higher values of theta dot means higher values of angular velocity. So aggressive actions are being penalized. Similarly, the third term is about giving very high tau values, very high tau values are penalized and this is what um, uh, is a good idea to consider because even at even if theta is away and you are giving a very high theta uh, torque then there is a chance that you will overshoot and then you will have to come back. So giving a very small tau's 
and small angular velocities would be a good idea or a good control strategy to look at instead of making a very um, swinging action to, to stabilize it. And that is why these, um, uh, these uh, high torque values and high, high angular velocities are being penalized in the remote function. Okay. Now let us see what comes up. In the, during, during the training phase, if I consider this kind, the same uh, reward function which is having 3 terms and their weights are being summed over to 1. This is something we will have to consider. Uh, during the training phase, let us say if my vertical stabilization from the initial condition of minus 0.74 being considered, then theta gets stabilized to some plus 180 degree plus pi condition here and you could see that omega is initially high but then gets stabilized to some value. Similarly, torque is between torque values once the uh, theta gets stabilized to its uh, desired position is within plus minus 10 degrees. Let us take the uh, other example where my uh, during the training phase if I consider a reward which has only 2 terms. Okay. Two terms, the, what was the third term? The third term was having the tau by max tau term. All right. So, this particular term I am not considering in this example and in that case what is the correction that I have to consider? I have to make this particular weight to 0.5 such that these two weights are, since there are only two terms, these two weights are uh, adding to to 1. I can, I can always consider uh, making some other weights, but I have given equal weights in this case. So, in that case, if I start from some other initial condition say, because we have to make uh, the learning method agnostic to the initial conditions, but this particular graph shows a part, some other initial condition which is minus 2.23. So, if I start from minus 2.23 degrees, where do I, where am I settling down to is theta is equal to minus 180 degree, which is minus pi position, which is e whether I consider plus pi or minus pi, uh, that is something is in a vertically upright condition. Now, we could see that omega is still within certain values, but torque is now when in, when it is in the stable condition, the torque values are between plus minus 50 degrees. So, if I am not penalizing for the high torque values in the reward function, in the reward function over here, we could see that torque values are not limited, are, are limited instead of li limited to a higher values which are plus minus 50, um, sorry, uh, plus minus 50 Newton meter in as compared to the plus minus 10 uh, Newton meter in the previous example when I was penalizing for the higher torque values. So, in all as a summary, if we see the, if I have to, to consider making the problem formulated in the reinforcement learning language, we will have to see what the simulation is, simulation uh, environment is to be, where else, where, 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 where can we add noises and disturbances in order to, to make sure that it, this fits into the realistic environment. Uh, case and then describe what is my observation space and describe what is my action space. By doing that, we are more or less understanding, okay, this is how my actual environment is to be, actual inverted pendulum in this case is going to function and creating the input output data set. So, this training phase makes sure that uh, my RL agent is is learned and the same RL agent now I can put it to the actual, actual inverted pendulum and apply this control inputs that is being learned through the simulated environment. In the next video, we will look into some more idea about how we have uh, designed the RL agent in MATLAB. Uh, those who already know the RL uh, method uh, terminology and, and have al already programmed the RL agents they can skip the next video. Thank you.